different people, different worlds drawn to each other like magnets. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. I love you, monkey. I love you more. I loved you first. <laughs> My mom will always be alive. Somewhere in time, I went back to save her. But I completely broke the universe. I have to undo what I did. Want some help? Who the hell are you? I'm Batman. I went back in time to save my mom. And I completely destroyed history. You changed the future. You changed the past. You changed the past. You changed the past. My mom, she's the best and kindest person in the world. You have to tell her that. Moms like to hear this kind of things. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. They just dropped a bunch of new Flash trailers, so we'll break it all down. There's a whole bunch of new footage and Easter eggs. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. One of the biggest things, it's not in these trailers, but it's separately, director Andy Muschietti just drew and posted a picture of what looks like the reverse Flash. It definitely doesn't look like one of Ezra Miller's versions of the Flash, two different versions in the movie. There are a couple different Flashes in this movie, but the reverse Flash isn't supposed to be a big character during this first Flash film. As you see here on his Instagram, the costume is yellow with red highlights like negative speed force, and the smile looks like a very Eobarthon evil kind of smile. The overall costume itself seems a little bit like his costume, like Barry's brand new Flash costume that's given to him in the Flash ring by Batman. But here's the thing, the Flash symbol on it is pointing the same way as the normal Flash symbol. Reverse Flash makes his symbol point the opposite direction of the Flash's. So what might be going on here is he's having a little bit of fun making a sly reference at the Dark Flash twist in this movie that we already know about, where the younger Barry kind of becomes an evil Flash fighting against the normal Flash using a crazy looking Kryptonian based Flash suit eventually. For most of the movie, he wears a homemade version of the Flash suit that they sort of cobble together, like they dumpster dive together using one of Batman's old armor suits. That's why it looks so weird, like there's even more footage that they posted on their Twitter account. But during most of the movie, he's wearing a yellow jacket. Reverse Flash's color is yellow. So I think what they're doing in this movie is that instead of just directly going to Reverse Flash, they're holding off on that character for a while. He might still be part of Flash's backstory and the death of his mother. Because he's so important to the Flash point of it all, like the whole reason why Barry goes back in the future in the first place to try and save his mother. But it seems like what they're doing is they're just using some Easter eggs for Reverse Flash and combining that with this Dark Flash twist, where really it's the younger Barry who's like 10 years younger than the present day Barry who doesn't fully learn the lesson like, no, you're not supposed to change time even though you have the ability to try and change time just because it leads to even worse things. Like, it will only make things worse. What did I do this time? There's also a brand new scene. It's kind of janky. The footage isn't super great quality, but there's a funny scene of him trying to give the younger Barry the flash ring and teach him about the flash suit. Suit is inside the ring. Ready? You're supposed to put it on before it hits the floor. I went back in time. I completely broke the universe. Want some help? Wait, he's Batman? Let's get nuts. Barry, what are you doing? Our kids are going to want to see this. During that, they also have that new funny scene of him telling his younger self that Batman really is Bruce Wayne and him not believing it. Like, wait a minute, you're telling me that Bruce Wayne is really Batman? That's ridiculous. It also seems like he's stuffing his face with something too, like he's got food all over his mouth. That's probably a reference to Barry Allen just eating. He calls himself a snack hole in the Justice League movie. Caused me to burn a tremendous amount of calories, so I am just a black hole of snacks. I am a snack hole. If you didn't catch the more recent episodes of the Flash TV show, because it's the last couple of episodes of the Flash TV show, like it's ending in a couple episodes, they actually had John Wesley ship back on and had a big reference to the original Flash 1990s TV series. During the scene, you see them take Barry to a pizza shop where he eats a ton of pizzas, which is basically a big plot point during that original 1990s Flash series where he just eats a crazy number of pizzas. You want this one? You know, help yourself. Oh, great, thanks. Would you, uh, would you like another one? 
just because as the Flash they try to explain that his body burns crazy calories when he's running fast. The way they get around that in more modern incarnations, especially in the comics too, is there are always references to him having to eat a lot, burning a lot of calories, but really what they do is they just say that the speed force works in a way that allows him to break the laws of physics, and it becomes a kind of a hand wavy thing where it solves a lot of those logic issues. But it does sound like they share some funny moments during the movie when he tries to explain to his younger self how he becomes the Flash. Like, this is how these powers work. Like, obviously he has to explain it in some way, but it probably do it in a pretty quick, funny way. Just hold on for a second. I'm going to shock you with some lightning. It's going to be the most painful thing that you'll ever experience, but you will have superpowers after we're done. Wait a minute, what? And then boom, he gets shocked with lightning. During the other clip where he says different people, different worlds drawn to each other, that's just a reference to the overlapping timelines where Batman 1989 Michael Keaton's timeline crosses over with the regular Flash's Justice League timeline and Kara's Supergirl timeline crosses over. The way they're explaining time travel and the different timelines crossing over the whole flashpoint of it all is a little bit like the Loki series with timelines and it seems like what winds up happening on this earth is that you have a bunch of timelines because the speed force just sort of crosses them over so it all feels like they came from the same timeline even though that's not the case. There were references to the Flash during the original Batman 1989, like there's the Mercury helmet, but I don't know what their plans were originally when Tim Burton was making those movies. Maybe they thought that someday they could do some other DC characters during those. But at that point, the only other really successful movie franchise that Warner Brothers had done from the DC Comics was the original Christopher Reeve Superman. There were some cool Easter eggs for a classic version of the Justice League, but this was just a promo that was done. Like, I don't know if they ever actually planned on pulling this off, but like you have all these original OG characters who were the biggest versions at this time in history. We've been talking about them eventually doing like a big crisis on infinite Earths in the movies. It would be cool if when they did that, they found a way to pay this kind of scene off where you do have a classic version of the Justice League. The whole idea with the continuity behind his Batman in this movie, though, is that the Batman 1989 and the Batman Returns movie are the only things that are canon to his timeline. They're basically treating Val Kilmer's Batman Forever and George Clooney's Batman and Robin as completely separate universes, each individually. There's supposed to be some sort of funny post credit scene at the end of the movie where Barry accidentally runs into another timeline and it winds up being George Clooney Batman's universe. Like, wait a minute, what are you doing here? Oh, I did it again. Oh, crap. The same way that when he goes looking for Batman earlier in the movie, he finds Michael Keaton's Batman. Like, wait a minute, you're not the Batman I expected to find. It also seems like there's an Easter egg for the Christian Bale Batman when he's running through the Speed Force here. In this concept art, you can actually see him over on the right here. The whole idea with the movies, they're using the Flashpoint twist to sort of soft reboot into James Gunn's rebooted DC movies, like they're calling it the DCU, with the new Superman Legacy movie, the new version of Batman, and Batman Brave and the Bold. Basically like a whole new universe with some actors being the same, but for the most part, a lot of new actors playing all the Justice League characters. But I think in addition to that, they're also trying to use this movie in the multiverse aspect of it all to canonize everything to like the larger DC multiverse so that when they eventually do a big multiverse movie like Crisis on Infinite Earths, they can bring everyone back and it'll make sense. Henry Cavill talked a lot about coming back. I just did a Superman Legacy video where he basically referenced that he talked to James Gunn about possibly coming back in the future. And I think that was meant to be a multiverse kind of twist. And speaking of the new version of Superman, the new version of Batman that they're eventually introducing in these new James Gunn movies, what we know so far is that we won't actually see those characters, like the new versions of the characters, for a good long while. Like, they're not going to show up in this movie or anything like that. Like, Henry Cavill, Superman, is supposed to have a cameo still in this movie. The new Superman Legacy movie is what James Gunn views as like the actual traditional beginning of his DCU. And he said during that movie, we're actually going to see it populated with a lot of the other big DC characters already. They'll already exist in the universe. I don't know if that means that he's also going to include the new version of Batman during that in some way or maybe some small reference to him. But the new Batman Brave and the Bold movie, I believe, is coming out in 2026, the year after. So it's not like Superman Legacy is going to come along in a couple of years and during that movie, Superman is the only big character that's in that movie. The other brand new footage they released is with Kiersey Clemens, Iris West. And we haven't seen footage of her in the trailers before, but this is the clip of her coming to see him. Can we talk? Come on in. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's a lot tidier in here than I expected. Can I offer you a drink? Sure. 
zoom and enhance, you may have also spotted a Pennywise Easter egg in the background here in Barry's apartment. That's because Andy Muschietti also directed the It movies. He's also working on the It prequel, Welcome to Derry. The other Easter egg that he included was a Guillermo del Toro Pacific Rim Easter egg because on one of his first movies, Guillermo del Toro became an executive producer and helped him make it. So in addition to all the regular DC Easter eggs for other DC movies, there's a lot of Easter eggs for Andy Muschietti's just real life in general. He's also wearing the same outfit when he talks to the Ben Affleck Batman about the whole Flashpoint of it all. And the other interesting thing, too, is that when he's telling Batman about the whole concept of Flashpoint, like, I think I can travel back in time and change history. I think I can bring my mother back. I think I can bring your parents back, too. When they're having that scene, Batman is standing with a marquee behind him, a theater marquee. So it's another reference to Crime Alley, the death of his parents, Thomas and Martha Wayne. Andy Muschietti did say that there would be a Flash sequel like The Flash 2, just depending on what the box office is like, and it seems like people think the movie's going to do pretty well. But James Gunn didn't say anything about what's going to happen to Ezra Miller, like will they recast? Honestly, I'd be totally fine if they just recast the character, if they want to keep using this version of The Flash. Let me know in the comments, what do you want them to do with the future of The Flash character in this brand new James Gunn rebooted DC Universe? There are a couple big giveaways that are still going on in my Marvel videos right now, so I'll name winners in the next couple of days. There was just a huge announcement about the casting and the actors that are going to be in Superman Legacy. Click here to learn about that, and click here for my brand new Venom 3 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.